Hello, Max. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. So I wanted to start uh, going back to your university years a bit. I was reading that you studied graphic design and illustration. Mm -hmm. So how, how did you make the, the transition to music? Um, I always played music, even during that time. I mean, since I was like 12 or so, 12 or 13. Uh, and then I always draw, drew as well, like to draw. And then, um, yeah, I didn't want to go, when the time came to go to college, I didn't want to go for music because, for one, I've never been able to read music and I knew I would have to do that. And then, also, I've, I was just afraid that it would, like, kill the joy of it for me, like, getting a music degree. Uh, so I had the idea to just do art, like visual art instead, and then just play music for fun on the side. So I did that. And, and when exactly did you decide to drop uh, uh, your, your graphic design college? Well, I'm actually still doing it. Uh, like I do it for work on the side. Um, so I can't quite make a living off of music, uh, so I'm doing that. Um, I do that in illustration and stuff. Um, so still doing it actually, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. I mean, I really started getting into playing music pr more predominantly uh, maybe like three or four years ago. Uh, I played in bands in college and stuff, but I really didn't get my own solo thing off the ground till probably yeah like three or four years ago was there a particular moment or situation in which you thought oh i need to start performing more i need to take music more seriously and um sort of i guess i mean i it was kind of just like i had a you know it was ever since i was younger and learning how to play guitar and writing songs and stuff i always wrote songs and um, at a certain point, you know, I had just pieces of songs everywhere and I, I just wanted to get them all cohesive into a thing that, can, that could be put out there. So I just made these uh, home demos and kind of made like a, gave myself like a, you know, a goal per month of like trying to do like two song, like release two songs per month on like online. The idea being sort of like a digital like single, like an A and a B side. Um, and yeah, I didn't really th know or think that anyone would pay attention to that stuff at all. I just kind of started doing it and putting it on Bandcamp. Um, but then, yes, yeah, slowly people started to like tell me they really liked it, and um, and then, it, yeah, it just kind of like moved on from there. All it kind of grew out of that. Did this help you to be more productive? I uh, yeah, I think so. That was kind of the idea I had in mind was, you know, giving myself a quota to meet, I guess, um, and. I've always done, you know, much better with deadlines as opposed to no deadlines, you know, in school as well as anything else in my life. If I don't have like a set deadline on something, I just procrastinate and put it off forever. Um, so even if it's like an imaginary deadline that I had to meet, like that helps, you know makes you, like, forces you to, to do it, you know. Yeah. And how was the, the, the reception to these songs? Um, I mean, it was pretty good for the most part. Like, no, nobody told me they hated it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, it wasn't, like, a huge response or anything. It was kind of just, like, people I knew in, in the scene in the neighborhood in Chicago when I'd be out, they'd be like, hey, like, I like the songs and stuff. Um, 
which was nice to hear for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, sorry, I kind of forgot the beginning of the question. No, it was about how 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 the the, the public reacted oh, to yeah. these songs. Yes. Yeah, I mean the responses I got were were all positive. Um, I think. Yeah, they were, you know, a few people like friends of mine <clears throat> and and people I knew around told me that they they liked the stuff, and then eventually a tape label, like cassette tapes, uh, called uh, Dumpster Tapes in Chicago, uh, told me they, they would put out, release the demos that I made, like, on tape. Um, so I did that, and then another smaller record label in Chicago called Randy Records took two of those same songs and pressed a 45. Um, so with that stuff, I started, like, you know, selling that stuff at shows, and um, yeah, I got a lot of really like positive response on that stuff. Um, I, don't know, I don't know why. I guess uh, it. I mean, the I think the aesthetic of the the recordings of my like home demo thing was pretty well suited to like tapes and that whole like there's a whole subculture of like I'm sure you know like cassette tape heads, you know, no pun intended, but, um, <clears throat> and yeah, how it, the song sounded like lo-fi or like old, I got that a lot, um, which really wasn't intentional, I was trying as hard as I could to make it sound good, but I just wasn't very good at it, <clears throat> but I, you know, I, I listened to all the old music, most, mainly, 50s and 60s and stuff like that so I think it that also lends itself to to that platform what were you listening to when you were recording this these first songs mm, I don't really remember probably the same kind of stuff I always listen to like old like doo-wop vocal groups from the 50s and um, old folk and country stuff, old blues, early jazz and swing music, uh, like all that stuff, big band. You released, uh, yeah, it just comes to my mind now, you released one song, let me check the name, uh, it has kind of uh, more, it has all your, your vintage elements to it, but also it does have a more contemporary feel, mm -hmm. uh, like going down sideways. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's interesting you say it, say it sounds contemporary. I mean, I don't really know what contemporary sounds like anymore nowadays. It's kind of like uh, with the Internet, it seems like everyone's just kind of doing everything, um, kind of pulling from all different time periods, as well as like a lot of people sample stuff you know, where it's like not just trying to copy something, but like literally taking pieces from like old things and putting it in, making it new, you know. Uh, but I was never, I've never really been able to do that. Uh, so I just try to like, I don't know, I just try to write in, in ways in the song writing style that I would want to listen to. And where does that, uh, uh, where, where does your uh, fullness of more classical, uh, like classic rock and roll, and where does it come from? Um, I don't know. I've just always been, I've always gravitated towards that stuff. I, I mean, maybe not always, but as, as soon as I learned about it, you know, it wasn't, always readily available you know like my dad had Bruce Springsteen CDs and stuff that I listened to when I was real young like five or something um, and yeah some of my earliest memories of of music of hearing like a vocal like the vocal slapback effect that you know I later learned originated in early rock and roll with like Elvis and people like that uh, and ro like rockabilly and stuff, but for some reason that 
that like vocal effect and style just like really hit me and even though it's like a really young kid I just like I don't know latched onto it